Hey everybody, it's Pam with Silver and Sparkles. I have a new series for you. I've been asking for ideas and requests and um, I got several to do a series on using envelopes to make junk journals. Guys, there are so many different styles of junk journals that we can make with envelopes. And we are gonna start with what I think is a pretty simple one. And we're gonna make one. I'm gonna show you how to construct it today. That'll be part one. And then part two, we will decorate, make flips, show you how to kind of take it to the next level. I've already done some of that with this one and layering some papers. And so at least two parts for that. And then the next video in the series will be a different style. So maybe a hardbound one or where we use the envelopes for to be like, um, placed in a regular signature, but in the middle, so it opens up like, like a regular envelope. Um, anyway, I could go on and tell you all the different ideas that I have. I've got lots of ideas of how we can use them. We can also use them to make some fun flippy flat folios, different size envelopes, you name it. So that's kind of my plan for this series. Today, we are gonna make a tall and skinny. And this uses five kind of just, um, I guess, legal size I don't know what you call this, envelopes. Mine happen to measure, I'm gonna call that nine and a half by four and a quarter. Use, you can use whatever envelopes you want. You'll have to adjust the papers that you use, of course, to make your journal to fit if you don't have envelopes this size, but it really will work. I'm gonna be giving you measurements based on the envelopes I have. These were gifted to me. I have a stack of them by my son, Stephen, who they were, um, bunch of office supplies that were going to end up being thrown out and so he, he brought me a few to play with so thank you Stephen. okay I was also going to show you really quick the papers that I'm using it's just scrap of paper I've had in my staff for years use whatever paper you have the brand I'm using is craft consortium I don't know if you can still get these patterns you might be able to the one here that I've already started on is secret garden and I love these papers, and I just wanted to start using some of them. So we're going to use this collection for this journal um, that I've already done, and I'll probably be decorating it some before part two. And then the one we're going to make together, though, is the Sea and Shore. And my husband and I, isn't this pretty? We vacation a lot at the beach, and we love the ocean, and manatees. I'll tell you my manatee story later while I'm crafting, if I don't forget. Um, but th this is the paper we're going to use today. So I've already cut everything that we need, but I just wanted to show you that. I believe you can get this brand at Michael's online, not in the store at Michael's. I've never seen it in the store. But I haven't bought any in years. And like I said, I'm trying to just kind of go through my stash. So I've already cut papers and things that we're going to use. And I may be making this one. I'm not sure if my husband's listening. Close your ears, Dan. But I'm thinking I might make this as a gift for him. Um, or for us to use for some of our memories from some of our vacations. So that's kind of what I'm thinking right now. So for the cover, if your envelopes are the size I'm using, but again, you can measure measure yours out, it's nine inches, and I wish I had cut this a little bit more. Like, I wish I'd gone to 10 inches. I went to nine and a half. So mine is nine by nine and a half, and my envelopes just fit in there. So I, I would say cut your, um, your cover to be a little bit taller than your envelopes. I guess I didn't on this one and it looks pretty good. So anyway, that's what I'm using for my cover. And then all I did was I went ahead and folded it in half. I'd already done that. So the cover, we'll end up getting some papers layered on the inside covers in a little bit. Let me show you how to get your signature together for this soft-sided journal. The one that I made ahead of time, all I did was I took the envelopes, I started playing with these, and I just nestled them together. It was super easy. Just all the flaps, the same direction, and put them in. And then that also meant all of my envelopes and the tuck spots are in the same direction. And it's, I like it. I think it's still gonna be an interesting journal. But I started thinking, I think we can 
turn some of the envelopes in different directions. This one I'd already turned inside out, so we can turn some like this, and we can also flip them so that the pages vary. So we're gonna do that. I'm going to make this be, this will be page one. And of course, this is the middle of the signature, wherever you have a crease. So for page two, I'm gonna do this one this way. All right, we'll just see what happens. And then this is one I've turned inside out. Let's turn it that way. And this one's also inside out. Let's turn it this way. And then for number five, we'll go this way. Now what this is gonna accomplish is, like this is the center of my signature. We'll have a, an envelope opening to this side. And then we'll have a flappy page. We'll have a blank page. An envelope going this way, a flappy page, and then an envelope going this way. So it just kind of buries it. That's all I did. So you can play with your envelopes and get yours however you like them. But then you do just need to find the center of your signature. So that is mine. And again, I'm using five envelopes. You could use more or less, I guess. It's up to you. And I'm going to clip them together. And if you guys have watched me, uh, bind signatures into journals. This is how I prep my signatures. I usually then use a couple of paper clips to hold everything nice and secure. I'm gonna have to watch for this, but it'll be okay. And I'm gonna do a basic three hole pamphlet stitch, which again, you guys have seen me if you've watched my videos, probably do this before, but if you're new, I hope this helps you. And if you know how to do a three hole pamphlet stitch and sew it in, you could skip this part of the video if you'd like. I hope you don't, because I'm gonna talk, but if you want to, go for it. All right, this is exactly 24 inches, or centimeters. So that was probably a better measurement for me to give you 24 centimeters by 10 and a half centimeters. That's the size of my envelopes. Okay, now I'm just making sure I've cut that where it didn't wiggle. So my center hole is going to be at 12 centimeters. I'm gonna poke a hole there, and then I'm gonna come up two centimeters, and then I want two centimeters, so that means this hole will be at 22 centimeters. And again, this was just <laughs> to get, I could have put some more paper clips to keep this from wiggling on me, our three holes punched in the correct place. There we go. And, whoops, I should have clipped them on to the cover before I poked the holes. That's all right. I wasn't thinking. So clip your cover on and do that again if you're crafting with me. Or hopefully you haven't and you will go ahead. When you're doing a soft-sided one single journal, uh, one, one signature journal, I just... do the cover at the same time as I do the pages. Okay, but no need to start over. It was easily fixable. Now we have our three holes, and now I'm gonna just sew them together really quick. And I'm gonna use some wax thread that I have. You could use embroidery floss, whatever. If you do want to see some of the supplies that I use, check out my Amazon storefront. It has things that I like and that I use in there. And um, it is an affiliate link. And I know you guys probably get tired of hearing me say this, but if you do make a purchase, Amazon gives me a few pennies. You don't need to, don't worry about it. But if you just wanna go and look for a resource, it's there for you. Um, the, the, the commission I get is no cost to you though. Okay, and it's not much but I still appreciate it when you guys click on my links and make purchases using it, it does help. And I will say, even if you're just browsing, Amazon then will show my content to more people if there's interest in it. So if you wanna just go window shop, that would be great. All right, I didn't tell you guys what I was doing, so let's start over. Thread your needle. <laughs> start in the middle, inside hole, the, the middle hole on the inside, 
because I'm going to tie my signature on the inside. If you want to tie yours on the outside. In fact, we'll, we'll do that. This one I tied on the inside. We'll tie this one on the outside. So it's just the opposite. I want to tie... Or, it's not the opposite. If I want to tie on the outside, I start on the outside. If I want to tie on the inside, I start on the inside. Middle hole. Come up. And then it doesn't matter which direction you go, but then go through the top hole. Mine and all my yammering and wiggling around has wiggled a little bit on me. But that's okay. I can find the holes. There we go. So then go up through the top hole. Make sure you leave your tail. Don't pull it all the way through. Skip the center hole. Go to the bottom or the top, whichever direction you're headed. There we go. Pull it through. And now you're gonna go back through the center hole. And we ended on the outside because we started on the outside, right? Now, normally I tie mine on the inside, but this string matches my little lighthouses really well, and I'm gonna tie it on the outside. And I might add a little dangle or something at some point on here. So we're gonna tie it three times. That's two, and then one more. Okay, and our little journal is together. Okay, now again, you have envelopes for the pages. So, you if you like these little si size pages, you could leave them in the shape, but I'm gonna cover mine with some paper to make closer to full pages or flip out pages with mine. I definitely like this, I think, better, having the pockets that are naturally formed by the envelopes not all clumped together because I put a variety of different kinds of pages and things in here, I, you know, I think it's okay and it's different and I'll do something on these, this side to make it hopefully a little more interesting, but I definitely like this better. Leave me a comment and tell me what you think. Which style do you like better? Okay, now I cut papers and I'm gonna give you the measurement that are nine and a quarter by four, because I can cut a 12 by 12 piece of paper, nine and a quarter inches tall, and then get three of these strips, three, four inch strips out of it. And so I thought that's a good size to layer my front and back inside covers. And then I can also use some of these for these pages as well, okay? So, I cut three from one piece of paper, and then I have the extra off cut here that we'll probably end up using at some point. Then I did a whole nother sheet of the penguins, same thing, nine and a quarter, right, by four. So I got three with the off cut, okay? And then I took one more piece of 12 by 12 paper. I cut it nine and a quarter inches tall, and then I just cut it in half. These are each six inches wide, so I got two of them. And that way we can have a paper that maybe is a little bit different width or has a flip out or something like that with these two. And those are the manatees. So I took three more pieces of 12 by 12 paper. I've already used one for the cover and I got everything I'm gonna need to make my flippy pages on these, on these pieces and my inside front and back covers. The pink ones, I love these. Um, I don't know, are those just like some fo f foliage? It looks like daisies and some seagrass. Yep, I love it. All right, I decided I want to use the river rocks for my front and back inside covers. The bubbles are really cute too. You decide, you pick your paper out and you decide. I'm gonna do a little bit of inking, not a lot. I'm using Walnut Distress Ink. 
And this paper has a little bit of a shimmer to it, which is a little different, again, from what I normally craft with, but it is beautiful. And like I said, it has been in my stash. I picked it out, I think it was like two or three years ago, really wanted several of these collections. I just thought they were beautiful. And my husband got them for me for Christmas. And I've used a piece or two here and there, but they've been sitting here staring at me. So we're going into the stash. And I don't think there's a direction to this. And we are going to work with some of these papers. Okay. I am using my Line Co. brand PVA wet white glue. And I'll show you what the bottle looks like. Put into these little, little tiny bottles. And again, you can see, see this or purchase this on Amazon if you need some glue. This is just going to give another design element and it's going to make my cover a little bit thicker. I will probably decorate the covers as well in some way. This is the glue that I'm using today, Line Co. brand PVA. If you're in the market for a wet white glue, I enjoy this one a lot. Okay, so let me tell you my manatee story while we just glue this page down. So I love manatees and I'm from Florida and that's where I was born and lived at different times in my life. We, we, we moved around a lot as a child, but my dad and mom were both born and raised there and that's where my dad is now and a lot of my extended family. So the manatees, if you've never seen them, they're also called sea cows and aren't they cute and they're huge. And there's a place, they're, they're in different places in Florida in the freshwater. And there's a place called Homosassa Springs. There's a whole manatee park. Anyway, my husband has joked for years and years and years that he doesn't think that they're real and that they're, he thinks they're fiction. And he likes to tease me about it because he's never seen one. And of all the trips we make, we had never made it to see the manatees. And so not this fall, but last year. So in 2023, when we were in Florida for my dad's 80th, big 80th birthday party, the day after the party, um, my dad and Dan and uh, my dad's girlfriend, Linda, and uh, my son, Daniel, and his girlfriend, Pepper, I'm trying to remember who else went. We all went to see the manatees and we had a lovely, lovely time. And Dan now believes that manatees are real because he's seen them, <laughs> but I love them. And um, Google them and watch some videos or something about the manatees if you don't know what they are because they're lovely, lovely sea cows. Okay, so our cover has been lined. So now let me show you how, well, we'll do a few of these pages, a couple of these and how I did that. And then I'm gonna show you how I made a template to cover the envelopes or the pockets with some book page. Again, all of this is optional. If you want to just leave yours white, that's fine. Or you could just decorate or collage some on there. You don't have to make yours exactly like mine. So um, you can give that some thought. Okay, so for the first page, so one option is very easy. We can, I if you're going to just glue it down, I would glue down the side that has the adhesive. So, like, you know, you could just glue this flap to this page and now you have a page. And then you can, again, decide if you want to layer other things, add pockets, flip outs, you could do that. So, and I, I did a couple like this and then I went ahead and then used perhaps like part one of my off cuts and then I layered it so then you get a page that kind of has two layers. You could also make it another side load pocket. Okay, so that's one option. So why don't we go ahead and do one like that? And then we will, I'll show you some other things I've done with the flaps. So what I will encourage you to do is come away from the center just a little bit. I would not glue it down all the way up because you're just adding more bulk to to, to where everything is sewn together and it's gonna put more stress on your journal. So I'm just I'm coming out just a little bit. I've got plenty of room this way with the size I cut the papers, so it's fine. Okay, so yes, I covered up some of the pretty paper, but I've 
got those cute penguins. So see what I mean? It didn't get too close to the edge. Now, again, I'm gonna look at what off cuts I have. I could go the match. Now, if I'm using the off cuts, we are getting, if there's a directionality, you're seeing it sideways, okay? So it's really easy to tell with the lighthouses, right? If you install it that way, it's gonna be sideways. I'm not that jazzed with just these kind of little waves. I don't mind the lighthouses being sideways. So I have not trimmed these papers to the size they need to be. I'm gonna measure. I need to trim this off um, not quite two and three quarter inches. So we'll go there. I'll have this piece for something else. And this should fit. The off cut that was left is like are about two and a half inches. Just to give you a perspective if you want to make yours similar in size to mine. I'm gonna trim just a little bit more off of here because it was it was a little bit taller than this paper. And I want to install this one so I get another another tuck spot instead of just the contrast of the papers. So I want it open on this side, so I'm gonna add glue to these three sides. I'm also gonna put a strip of glue right in the middle to make it two little pockets. And that I'm approximating the middle. I'm not worrying too much about it. You can mark yours if you wanna make sure you lay your glue right in the middle. Let's see what I'm doing. I'm not being the neatest for some reason. I don't know, I usually am a little more precise than that. Okay. And again, don't go too close to the center. And we're gonna lay it down. And I held it by the right, correct side, so I left my pockets open. All right, so now I have a pocket here. And I have a pocket here. And I am going to leave that to dry before I mess with it too much. This side, has penguins and we can decide what to do with it later. Okay, now I have another flap. So let me show you what I did with several of these. I took the flap, and again, I'm on the sticky side. If I wet that, that's the part of the envelope that would close. And guys, by the way, if you don't wanna add the extra pages, you could just glue this flap to that page. This is the solid page and just have a page and you don't have to add extra pages in. Okay, again, up to you. I, what I did with several of these is I folded the, the point of the envelope kind of to the center to try to get it as straight as I can. And then I just folded it over again, trying to make it straight. And then I glued all of this together. And I'll show you what happened so you can decide if you want to do any like this. You don't have to. A piece and this part doesn't have to be perfect when I'm going to really make sure I get it glued down is now on this piece. All right. Nice and small. So now it's more like a hinge and it isn't going to cover up as much of our decorative paper. So why don't I use one of the manatees now? And I am going to glue my manatee page. And of course you can see already, this cute, it's like the little um, sea lights and nets. It's wider, so I'm gonna score this before I glue it down and decide, do I want it to just be a flippy open? Do I want it exactly in half? Again, lots of choices to be made. I think, I know this is six inches wide, so I think I'm going to, on that six inch side, I'm gonna score mine at two and a half. And this paper does tend to crack sometimes. I'm gonna score it on both sides and try to keep it from cracking, hopefully. 
things flying everywhere. Okay, let's see what happens to my manatees. Okay, and I do have to pay attention <laughs> to where I put the hinge so that everything fits in. So it's gonna go this way, all right? And again, I wanna make sure I stay off of the center just a little bit. So I'm gonna lay it in here. I'm leaving probably an eighth of an inch and I'm going to add glue to this tab and I'm not putting the glue all the way down because I wanna leave that gap, okay? There we go. So it's kind of just like a hinge style for the pages. Instead of it covering up by having the full triangle. And we can always cover this up with another strip of paper. You can leave it. <laughs> you can add another pocket. You know what? There's again lots of choices. So when we open up our journal now. We have a blank page. We have a side pocket. We have this page with the side pocket. Whoa. It'll fit. Another envelope side load. And now we have a page that opens this way and this way. And if we want to, we can fold it back like this, which I think I like. So now you get to this page, it opens up, and it turns like this. Isn't that pretty? And again, we're going to keep going and we're going to keep adding different flips and styles and flaps to these. We could take two pieces just like this and make just a narrow page. Again, we could glue this down and then cover this page. We don't have to add one to every flap, okay? All right, and I'm gonna now show you, instead of doing more of those right now, I'm gonna show you how I covered these pages. You can do these with scrapbook paper, with digitals. You can do book page like I'm doing. Again, yours doesn't have to look exactly like mine. So let me get out some book pages. And this is that Atlas book I was telling you guys about. It has some beautiful map page. Map page would be pretty. But I've just been using some of these pages that just has, I guess, the index for the Atlas. And I certainly could get my seam ripper out and tear the pages out carefully. But I think I'm just gonna do what I've been doing and just rip a few out. I know I need five total for the five envelopes. I get enough with the size these pages are to line the inside of the envelope just a little bit. I like I put a piece in here because I liked seeing that. And then also the piece that I cut to fit. One, I need one page for each of these envelopes. So it just happened to work out that way. All right. And these are tearing okay with all five. So I am going to use my ruler. I want mostly the text without the white space. So I'm going to tear these carefully since I'm doing the whole stack. So if I mess up, all of them get messed up. Okay, now we're gonna use this to help us measure the size that we need. And I want it to be a little bit smaller than the envelope because I want it to have a little bit of the white edging around. So I'm just, whoops, I didn't tear that one the best. And I'll save these in my paper bin for something else later. Okay. I'm going to be a little more careful this time when I'm tearing. And again, I'm just using my envelope to help me measure. And so now my pages definitely fit in there. They ended up being hmm, a little more than three and three quarters and not quite nine and a quarter. Now, each page 
if I did this right, each envelope will get a page in here. And all I did was stick it in. I did ink this edge because I wanted to see the ink. So let me do that really quick. So each envelope got one page like this. And you don't have to ink if you don't want to. And then I just took my glue and I just ran a bead of glue right under there so that it won't lift up. It's not coming out of this envelope. And now I don't have to worry about when I'm going to put things in there. So that's easy, that part's easy. I do need to go ahead and use one of these to help me tear this stack to the right size. So let me do that really quick before I forget. Makes it a little bit easier. I go ahead and do that. I need five more. I'm trying to be a little more careful. Good enough. <laughs> okay. Now, that now I'm going to use one of these to make a template to fit um, the, I don't know, what is this? The cutout. The cutout part. So I'm just sliding it all the way in there. Okay. And I'm going to come up just a touch. I think that's pretty good. I came up just to about right here on my envelope. And get it as straight as I can. And I'm going to take my pencil and carefully I'm going to just draw a line using the envelope as a template. And I could get, you know, I have more of these envelopes. I, whoops, I could use one of those. That's going to get covered up when I layer the paper, but it's also... It's also a pencil, you can erase it. Now, I don't know if you guys can see that, but it's just the little line there. Now, before I cut all five that I need using this template, I'm gonna cut one out, and I'm going a little to the right of the line that I drew into the part that we're gonna use. And then I'm gonna make sure it looks right before I cut all of them. Looky there. Looks pretty good. It layers right in there. We have a little bit of white all the way around, and I like it. So that's how I make the template. I know I need five of these. So one, two, and I kind of want the ones without the images if possible. I did, I left some of the images in the envelope on the other one. I don't know if I'm going to have enough. Three, without the picture and if, if I don't that's okay oh I do four okay and then these will be the ones that I put inside the envelopes so I'm gonna stack these together I'm gonna take my template and I could just pick up my scissors and cut but I'm gonna draw it out whoa it it's very thin paper and it's of course with the the template being the exact same paper as I was tracing on it was a little hard to see okay now I am going to just hold these carefully and cut all five of them at the same time and hope that I cut them good enough I'm not a super perfectionist when it comes to this part. You know, if they're a little off, I'm okay with that. I can always, before I glue it down, I'll check each one and make sure they're okay. But we're going to call those close enough. All right. I am going to do some light inking around the edges before I glue it down. And then that's how I layered them. And I do think, especially with this journal, alternating the envelopes, 
it's going to have a little more interest and not all of the book page exactly the same at the back of the journal. Okay. Like I said, I'm really excited about the, the, the land and sea, ocean and beachy kind of themed papers and the river rock and all of that. I think um, it'll be fun for some of our vacation memories and something my husband would enjoy looking at too. All right, there we go. And again, this is the thing about junk journaling and using different, you know, supplies and things. It, it doesn't have to be absolutely perfect, every piece. And so by the time you add some distress ink on here, and of course we're going to embellish and, and add more things, it's going to be great. Now this, I think I ended up right here in the center of the journal. I could leave this flap, I could um, layer some paper on it and leave it more like a traditional envelope where you open it up and there's the inside. I don't think, I guess I could have done that with a few now that I alternated it. I may do that for the center, but I don't think I'm gonna do it for any of the other pages. I think like I could use this one, you know, that way. I like having the extra pages, I think. So again, you do you, like this one doesn't work that way because this isn't the opening, but this one would for this envelope. It doesn't have one. This one would. I guess it's just thinking through when you, you know, design, it's upside down. When you design your project, all right, this is the correct way. If, if, you, if you like that idea or not. And if you want to be able to use them this way, you'll have to plan out how you layer your envelopes. So that's two that we could actually close. And then this is an extra flip. I hope I haven't confused you guys. Just so many things, so many possibilities, things to think about. Okay, so let's really quick, I think you guys got the gist of what I was doing. But let's just do one more that we layer in. The ones that go on the inside of the envelopes, you don't have to ink all the way around because you are only going to see that one edge. So right there, you get it straight. And then, like I said, I just run a bead of glue, press it down and done. And I will say, look, I got a paper cut. These, th these flaps, okay, well, this, they are sharp for some reason. And I sliced my finger up earlier and I definitely um, encourage you to be careful if your envelopes are sharp too, because I was not expecting that. Okay. So I hope I showed you guys enough to help you get started if you wanna make an envelope journal of this style. In the next video in this series, I will show you how I'm going to decorate and what elements I'm gonna put on pages. So additional pockets, tuck spots, I do some additional flip outs, things like that. I haven't decided yet if I'll use more envelopes, maybe. So that'll be for you guys to look forward to, I hope. I imagine, uh, like I said, two, two at least for this style of envelope journal, two videos will be enough. So I will try to commit that my next video that I do will be part two of this one because I'll keep doing other types of things too. I don't just do one one series and stay with that. I jump around a lot <laughs> but I will um, get you the part two so you guys can see how these come together and then pick a new style envelope journal for the next one. All right, please, if you haven't already, consider subscribing to my channel. I would love to hear from you. Leave me a comment. Tell me if you like these and if you're going to make some, if you like having all of your pockets 
to one side of the journal, which actually could be fun. You could journal and kind of collage on one side, now that you can't collage on these, and then have all your mementos at the back. Or do you like this style? I think this is my favorite. Um, let me know. And um, I hope everybody has a great one until next time. Thanks, guys.